Have you ever wanted to do a bungee jump or maybe have a go at skydiving or simply experience the thrill of learning to ice skate? Well, now you can do all those things and much, much more on board a cruise ship. Welcome to Planet Cruise Weekly's 20 things you never expected to be able to do on a cruise ship. Well, hello and welcome to episode 47 of Planet Cruise Weekly. You can see once again, I'm, I'm joined by the good looking uh, co-anchor, uh, Jade. What, what does that mean about Glenn though? Well, I, I say this to Glenn's face, I'm not <laughs> afraid to say it, you know, I'll say it behind his back at the same time. Um, today's episode, of course, is all about uh, unusual and unexpected and you know, like adrenaline pumping things that uh, you can do on board a cruise ship. And one of the biggest challenges, in fact, facing cruise companies today is how to attract uh, younger passengers whilst at the same time keeping those cruise veterans hooked. Most of their efforts are focused on the, the onboard entertainment, creating ever more ingenious ways to get passengers to sail with them. And in fact, when I started working as part of the onboard entertainment team back in 2000, our daily offerings, would you believe, Jade, uh, were focused pretty much around bingo, quizzes, shuffleboard, I kid you not, and the highlight, the highlight of the week on board the MS Sundry back in 2000 was the wooden horse racing. That's it. Things have certainly changed since then. They certainly have, Jade. With every new cruise ship that's floated out, the big cruise giants compete to outdo the opposition in a race to create the biggest, fastest and most fun adrenaline filled activity possible. Uh, so these days you can ice skate, you can bungee jump, you can skydive your way through your cruise without even stepping off the ship. So today, what we're going to do is look at some of the most crazy, fun and unusual activities you can do on board, which are guaranteed to get your pulse racing. So, welcome to Planet Cruises 20 things you never expected to be able to do on a cruise ship. And number one is skydiving. Yes, you did hear us right, skydiving. We're starting with what I feel was probably the most exciting new addition. Uh, it's something I've always wanted to do, and in fact I was booked to do it back in Honolulu in 2012, but it got cancelled due to there being too much cloud, would you believe it? So I missed out, but now you can have a go on board one of Royal Caribbean's Quantum Class vessels. So it's called the Ripcord by iFly, and all the action takes place in a 23-foot tall glass wind tunnel, uh, which acts as a flight chamber. So after an informal kind of training session with the instructor, They'll set you up with your flight suit. You'll have your goggles, your helmet, all the gear, and no idea. <laughs> and uh, they'll show you all the important hand signals and movements you'll need to do whilst you're in there. So what you actually get, you'll get two one minute flights where you can, uh, if you can stop screaming, you'll see views all across the ocean. Your friends and family can watch and uh, laugh at you. And uh, the instructors sometimes also even put on a show for you and show you all the flips and tricks that you can do whilst you're in there. Jay, general knowledge question for you. What is nine decks high and 82 foot across? And I don't say my head. <laughs> I don't know, Keith. The zip line on the Royal Caribbean ships. Okay. Yeah, incredible, incredible. And these zip lines on board Allure of the Seas and Oasis of the Seas are simply sensational. As long as you're not, of course, acrophobic, uh, you can strap on the harness, you can speed up through the air on this intra-ship zip line. Just remember not to wear flip-flops. Otherwise, fellow cruisers strolling below on the boardwalk may end up with your Havianas in their ice cream cones. <laughs> so the third amazing thing that you can do on a cruise ship is uh, racing go-karts. Can't wait for this, this is brilliant. So yes, you have heard us correctly. As of summer 2017, any of your budding Lewis Hamiltons are going to be able to race go-karts on board the brand new Norwegian Joy. Now it's the first of its kind uh, over the two level open air racetrack uh, located on the top deck and will be one of several groundbreaking features on this brand new vessel which costs over 640 million pounds. <laughs> um, currently being built in Germany and is due to launch in summer 2017. Okay, in at number four, it's the F1 simulator. I've done this, it's great fun. So both MSC and Costa Cruises feature F1 simulators on board many of their ships. And speaking from experience, it really is an incredibly immersive virtual reality experience that really does get your pulse racing, literally. And you strap yourself into an actual race car, then you uh, take the wheel and you race down the track, complements of this, this giant movie screen which is in front of you. And be warned, the car does whine, it bumps and it bounces just like the real thing. 
So, sticking with the boy eraser theme, at number five we have bumper cars. Love them! Keith's absolute favourite fairground yeah. ride. Uh, our bumper cars, or as the Americans call them, dodgems, <laughs> features <laughs> as part of the Seaplex area on board Royal Caribbean's Quantum class ships. Uh, there's a small fleet of colourful retro cars, as you'd imagine. They're quite nippy, highly manoeuvrable. You know, the, the really weird thing about this, Jay, when I, when I had a go um, on board, is that, is that the, the American staff didn't get the idea of you trying to actually bump into other people. They no. really don't like it. They, they like you to actually dodge, you know, which I guess is, comes down to the name. Whereas, it's boring. It's boring, isn't it? You want to hit as many people <laughs> as possible. That's the whole point. Okay, in at number six, I almost feel I should do this with my best pirate impression, which is Warp the plank, me arties, arr. You like that? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> after mastering some 40 challenges on the three-story ropes course, on board Norwegian Breakaway and Getaway, you can prepare yourself for the plank. And it's a 15 centimetre wide board. It extends 25 metres over the side of the ship and a whopping 55 metres above the open ocean and it kind of gives you a taste of what the, the mutineers must have faced in the old days when they were forced to, to walk the plank. The big difference here though is that you're wearing a safety harness. Thank goodness. Mm. So coming in at number seven is the sky ride. This might be something you've not ever heard of before, but keeping things airborne up high in the sky, the sky ride on board Carnival Vista is suspended 150 feet above sea level. What it is is a pedal powered uh, car which features uh, open-sided cabins that can be cycled around an 800-foot track around the top of the ship. Tell me, Jade, did you ever, when you were a child, fantasise about running away and joining the circus? I still do now. <laughs> do you really? Yeah. Well, I suppose you kind of work for a circus anyway, don't you, in a way? <laughs> it's all a bit of a circus. <laughs> Crazy life that we have here at Planet Cruise. Well, uh, if that was you, like Jade, uh, you kind of fantasised about that as a kid, you now have a chance to live that dream and learn how to fly through the air on a trapeze on board Royal Caribbean's Quantum of the Seas, Anthem of the Seas and Ovation of the Seas. And it's another experience that's part of what they call the Seaplex. You have done a safety harness and then you become King of the Swingers, a jungle VIP. So number nine, Keith, is rope courses. Now, Go Ape has become a huge phenomenon across the UK and therefore it's no surprise that those canny cruise companies have brought it on board mm. their ships. Carnival have recently introduced a fantastic rope course on board the Vista, which is called the Sky Course. It features two levels of difficulty depending on age and confidence. Naturally, safety harnesses are worn by all ages, but that doesn't take the challenge out of the balancing, the dangling on the beams, bridges and wires. It's a real aerial assault course, but do make sure you stop to enjoy the fantastic sea views and breezes along the way. And also, as mentioned earlier, Norwegian cruise lines have this challenging rope course. They've got it on the Norwegian Escape. Mm. I think some of their other ships. It's as part well. of what we talked about earlier, part of the plank mm. experience. Mm. So you do a bit of rope course, a bit of the rope course, and then you go and do the plank. In at number ten. I like that. That was my top of the box voice. Very good. Yeah. Okay, we have the North Star. It's probably one of the most talked about innovations in the history of modern cruising. And again, it sits on Royal Caribbean's excellent quantum class ships. Now, a pod reminiscent of a London eye compartment leisurely cranes guests up more than 300 feet above sea level and over the side of the ship for unparalleled ocean views. The ride tends to last around 15 to 20 minutes. They can accommodate, amazingly, I didn't know this, up to 14 people. Um, and including one person uh, as a wheelchair passenger as well. And this is something else I, I love the sound of because I've not yet had a chance to do uh, the North Star. You can actually hire these pods, you can hire the North Star for special occasions like proposals, anniversaries, or even for a full on wedding ceremony. Wow. It'd be quite incredible, wouldn't it? So, Keith, in at number 11 is surfing. Nowadays, thanks to Royal Caribbean, you don't have to head to Hawaii to learn how to surf. The Flow Rider Surf and Bodyboard Simulator has been a permanent feature on board Royal Caribbean's ships for several years now and shows no sign of decreasing in popularity. You can try the simulator for free or you can pay for private tuition uh, if you do want to have some private surfing lessons. Okay, now at number 12, it's some pretty amazing water parks. Now many people might argue that the last thing you want to do if you're on a cruise ship is get wet. But if you do, then why not do it in style with a whiz plop and shriek? Now Disney have the edge here with their innovative aqueduct. It's, it's a wily kind of water coaster that twists and turns and talks for 765 feet over and around the pool decks of Disney Dream and 
Disney fantasy. And the ride provides amazing views of the water both on board and off. And at one point, the actual coaster protrudes 12 foot off the side of the ship, which is quite incredible. And that is at 150 foot above the ocean. My gosh. Plus, over on Disney Magic is the Aquadunk water slide. At three stories high, includes a plummet through a trap door onto a translucent tube, easy for me to say, <laughs> that shoots out 20 feet over the ship's side. Now, other notable wet and wild water slides include Norwegian Cruise Line's Freefall. And this is available on Norwegian Getaway and Breakaway, where you can race another guest through literally Freefall. It's amazing. And finally, one we really wanted to mention, there is the Vertigo slide on board MSC Preziosa. You can see where they probably named it that. Mm. Offering a 390 feet of colourful twists and turns, including a spin over the edge of the ship from 18 decks high. Not for the faint-hearted. OK, in at number 13, something I imagine you're very good at, Jade, ice skating. And again, this is another Royal Caribbean favourite. It's available on all their Oasis, Freedom and Voyager class ships. And passengers both old and young can pull on a pair of skates and have a go. And unlike the ice rinks back in the UK, it's free of charge. Now, if you do need some inspiration, then you can sit back and watch one of the professional shows uh, that they put on. And um, really, I think it's, it's probably still one of the greatest additions to any cruise ship ever, because it's the kind of thing you never expect. So in at number 14 is Tempin Bowling. Whoa! I know, not That's crazy. the most adrenaline pumping <laughs> action activity, but not everybody likes adrenaline. True. So uh, on some of the larger cruise ships, you can even find a decent sized bowling alley, such as the Norwegian Epic, the Pearl and the Gem. They've actually got several lanes. You can still rent those attractive red and white bowling shoes that make you feel like a real prat as we all love them. I love them, they're great. It's what bowling's all about, isn't it? It's not bowling without those shoes. <laughs> it's not, no. <laughs> okay, in at number 15, bungee jumping. However, we have been a little misleading in the intro when I mentioned bungee jumping because what I actually meant to say was bungee trampoline jumping, which isn't strictly the same thing. It's kind of the same thing. I mean, you do wear bungee cords, but instead of jumping off a crane and plunging for hundreds of feet, you just bounce up and down on a trampoline, but it's still really, really fun. Uh, and this is available uh, with Royal Caribbean and also on Norwegian ships. And normally there is a weight limit, it's about 125 pounds, which means I'm definitely not able to do it. You probably are able to do it. Um, and it tends to mean that it is more for the children. So apparently these next two are, in Jade's words, the posh ones. So in at number 16 is water sports. If you decide to board on one of the Sea Dream yachts, you'll have the opportunity to ride some seriously high-speed watercraft from their retractable water sports platforms. Jet skis aren't the only available toys though, uh, as these floating marinas also feature stand-up paddle boards, uh, glass bottom kayaks and uh, laser sailboats with experts on hand to give you instructions and even lessons. Now number 17, submersibles. So if you have a spare $600 <laughs> hanging around, as you do, and you've always wanted to try scuba diving but you don't like getting wet, then Crystal Cruises and their yacht, the Esprit, has the answer because wait for it, it has its very own submarine. Wow. Yeah, you did just hear me correctly, they have their very own submarine. Um, and it's called the Sea Explorer um, and it has a pilot and two passengers. It can cruise at speeds of up to three knots, it can dive uh, 300 metres, that's approximately a thousand foot into the sea, which is far deeper than you ever get with a tank uh, and some flippers, trust me as a, as a diver speaking there. Um, and the trips tend to take around 20 to 30 minutes. And then thanks to a 360 degree, what they call uh, flexiglass, it's uh, wonderful for just looking around you and seeing all the marine life. And I mean, I'm talking like I've actually done it, I haven't done it. I wish I, I, wish I could have done it. It looks it amazing. looks amazing, yeah. doesn't it? So again, if you want to do that and you've got the money, definitely give it a go. So in at 18 is laser tag. Yes. Now Carnival did try this back in 2010 with an inflatable tag zone, mm. but it never really took off. But the latest rumors from Norwegian Cruise Line is that their new Norwegian Joy will feature laser tag, or as we Brits like to call it, laser quest. Mm. Basically, your chance to don some plastic body armor, charge around in the dark, shooting your friends. Every boy's idea of paradise. <laughs> Absolutely, but you know what, not just boys. I did this recently uh, with my, my eight-year-old uh, girl, Sunny, her daughter and, and, and her friends, and we had an absolutely amazing time. I went in with them, I was the only adult. Did you win? No, I got beaten by a nine-year-old boy. Okay, our penultimate 
amazing thing to do on board a cruise ship in at number 19 is to climb the mast of the Star Clippers ships. And this really is keeping it simple, it's rolling back the years, and it's probably actually the most adrenaline-inducing activity of all the ones that we've mentioned. You get to experience a, a real taste of what it must have been like to be a sailor during the golden age of sail. Now, Star Clippers Star Flyer has four masts. They reach an incredible height of 226 foot, which, wow. trust me, is pretty high. And you get the chance to climb up 65 foot up the rope ladder to the crow's nest. Now the climbing sessions are available for approximately one hour and they take place in the mornings or the afternoons while the ship's at sea. It's a unique experience for passengers of any age as long as you're physically fit enough to have a go. Apparently children as young as eight have done it. Wow. Uh, older people as old as, old as 80 have also completed it as well, which is quite amazing. Um, and it will give you some of the best memories ever. And plus, it's free. And last but definitely not least, at number 20, test your escape skills mm. with the escape room. I've actually seen this for myself. Have you done now, it? Yeah, I've uh, not actually done the challenge, but I've been in and had a look around. Wow. So you may or may not have noticed that escape rooms are the new in thing at the moment. So it's no surprise that the innovative cruise line Royal Caribbean have introduced their very own. It's called Escape the Rubicon on board the Harmony of the Seas. Now basically it's an adventure game in which players are locked into a room and they've got to solve a series of puzzles to escape. And in this particular version, uh, 4 to 12 people board the starship Rubicon, which very quickly experiences a power outage, leaving it tumbling in space dangerously close to the sun where they're all going to burn. Uh, and they've got 60 minutes to get the power and navigation back up by solving a variety of puzzles and finding the necessary props. And interestingly, Jake, it's quite a challenge. Only 30% of groups actually manage to escape within the 60 minutes. Uh, and it's a really good bonding experience for groups of friends and families and also an excellent way to get to know new people. Hopefully um, that's kind of enlightened you. It's certainly excited myself and Jade. There's loads of things there uh, which we haven't had a chance to do yet that we really want to get a chance to. So hopefully in 2017 if we keep our fingers crossed. Um, thank you for the suggestion of doing this. Remember you can suggest any topic you want for Planet Cruise Weekly. We're here to basically work with you and to give you the information that you want. Um, now. If people want to get in touch, Jade, how do they get in touch out of interest? So you can email us at hello at planetcruise.co.uk. You can comment on our Facebook, Twitter, or you can even subscribe to Planet Cruise Weekly on our YouTube channel. Which is free and just gives you updates when new material gets released. So actually, it's a bit of a no-brainer. It's a definite one that you should do. Now, the best of the comments from last week, we just want to say a big hello to these people. First of all, you may or may not know we do a deal of the week. Every week comes out on a Friday. And so we've got one of the comments back from there. This was from John uh, McGlone. I hope I pronounced that right. And uh, he said, we're on this ship in approximately 16 weeks. So there we go. Thank you very much, John. Uh, just click the link there if you want to go through and see that deal of the week and some of the other deal of the weeks as well, because there's some real corking bargains on there. And we also want to say a big thank you to a good friend of the show's, a good friend of mine. I met him on the first ever cruise with Keith, uh, Mark Woods, um, who said, never seen so many contradictions in one episode as I did on Save Money on Your Next Cruise. But hey, it all makes sense, kind of. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, we were confused as well, so I'm sure you were confused. There we go. Um, thanks so much for watching. For myself and Jade, have a wonderful week, whatever you do, and we'll see you next week with another exciting Planet Cruise Weekly. Bye-bye.